Welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carey is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please welcome your host, Dr. Carey Drisga. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show, the only Internet radio show dedicated to giving you real solutions to improve your health. Not only are they real solutions, but they're natural solutions as well. Because as you know, the one and only true wealth you have is your health. I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc, and I'm committed to helping you find the root cause of your health problem, fix the cause with natural treatments so you can feel normal again and live your life to the fullest. Today's topic is the Walls Protocol, Cooking for Life. I'm so very excited about today's show because I have special guest Dr. Terry Walls uh, back on our podcast. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Dr. Walls is a functional medicine practitioner, clinical researcher, and a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Iowa. Though she is at the forefront of functional medicine, what sets Dr. Walls apart is her experience using nutrition and lifestyle interventions to treat progressive health problems to heal her own MS and later that of others. Within a year of beginning her Walls protocol, Dr. Walls went from being bound to a zero gravity chair to completing an 18 mile bike tour without any disease modifying drugs or surgery. Dr. Walls, thank you so much for being back again as a special guest on the Functional Medicine Radio Show. Well, thank you so much for having me. So, Dr. Walls, let's first start, if you could just briefly share your story about beating MS. Sure. You know, uh, before I was diagnosed uh, as an academic doc, very skeptical of special diets and supplements, and I thought it's all a waste of money, all that complementary alternative medicine stuff. You know, but God works in mysterious ways. Uh, so um, in, uh, during medical school, I started having trouble with uh, pain. Uh, saw many neurologists, uh, uh, no clear diagnosis. Uh, then had a, a bout of uh, dim vision. Uh, again, no clear diagnosis. Uh, and then in 2000, had developed weakness in my left leg. At that point, had uh, MRIs of my brain, spinal cord, spinal tap and a diagnosis of relapsing remitting MS was made. Uh, being an academic doc, I thought I should treat my disease aggressively. I sought out the best people I could find here in the Midwest, which was the Cleveland Clinic. Saw, you know, their best people, took the newest drugs, and experienced seven years of steady decline. Um, and, you know, I went through the ABC drugs, uh, then I took uh, uh, mitoxantrone, and then I took a drug called... Um, uh, Tizabri, which is the new biologic drug, still declined. Uh, but, you know, the good news is during that decline, I realized that conventional medicine wasn't going to stop this slide into a bedridden, possibly demented life, and that uh, my pain control was getting to be more and more difficult. You know, and that's when I started on this uh, journey. Uh, I uh, uh, would then create a diet and lifestyle program uh, based on uh, paleo principles and functional medicine that, you know, got me out of the wheelchair, uh, uh, fully functional, uh, walking easily, uh, biking, uh, pain-free, uh, as long as I follow the protocol. If I fall off the protocol, uh, you know, uh, the pain comes back in uh, really horrific ways. So it makes it very easy for me to stay uh, very true to the protocol. So it's phenomenal, your, your journey, your success with treating your MS, your success with treating many other patients and many other healthcare conditions with your protocol. Yeah. So can you talk briefly, because your protocol is not only for MS. Yeah, yeah. You know, so my clinical uh, clinics at the VA were originally uh, the traumatic brain injury clinic in primary care, um, and we had great success with helping people recover from traumatic uh, brain injury. We had a uh, very nice success uh, with, you know, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, obesity in primary care. Then the chief of medicine asked me to create a 
a clinic where, that was really just devoted to uh, using diet and lifestyle. We called that the Therapeutic Lifestyle Clinic. And there uh, we saw people with medical problems, neurologic problems, uh, mental health problems. Uh, uh, and the only requirement was that they had to understand I was just using diet and lifestyle. You know, and, and we saw, of course, many, many different kinds of autoimmune issues, lupus, RA, uh, scleroderma, mixed connective tissue disease, psoriasis, uh, sacroiliitis, uh, myasthenia gravis. We saw people with neurological problems, uh, a wide variety of uh, neuropathies, uh, Parkinson's, uh, some early Alzheimer's, moderate Alzheimer's. Uh, and then, of course, uh, diabetes, obesity. I uh, had a, uh, several folks with heart failure come through uh, who also did very well. You know, I, at first, it, it when I first started practicing this way, my colleagues w it would be beside themselves because I seemed to be using the same approach for whatever the disease state uh, it was that I was taking care of. Um, it, and so that made them really uncomfortable. But then as my research came out and as our clinical success was, was so apparent, uh, then uh, uh, th those critics uh, began began to be replaced by uh, huge fans. Huge fans is an understatement, I think. <laughs> um, Dr. Walls, what would you say is the single most powerful intervention to lower all causes of mortality and morbidity? Well, I can tell you, uh, even based on our research data, we, we just um, uh, were able to ha have another paper come out and we'd analyzed uh, in our first study uh, the impact uh, of uh, the dose of our interventions. You know, did they eat all the vegetables we told them to eat? Did they avoid the foods we told them to eat? Did they meditate, and how many minutes did they meditate? Did they exercise, and how many minutes did they exercise? Did they do the electrical stimulation of muscles, and how many minutes? Uh, and, and then we, you know, we, we did the associations between the, the amount of the dose of the intervention we told them and the outcome in terms of fatigue reduction, uh, improvement in mood, and improvement in their thinking ability. And uh, all those vegetables, uh, association was very powerful. The p-value less than 0 .0001. Uh, avoiding the harmful stuff was also powerful. That p-value was 0 .0001, so, uh, or 0 0.005. So still very powerful although eating more vegetables turns out to be slightly more powerful. Uh, in our experience, you really have to do both, though. If, if you uh, are eating gluten and dairy, uh, eating lots of vegetables you, you, uh, won't be enough to overcome eating the bad stuff. Um, but was, what was fascinating and surprising to me was um, how much more powerful the diet was than either stress reduction or uh, the exercise. I mean, I, I thought those would be hugely important, and they're very useful, but absolutely the most powerful in improving cognition, in improving uh, fatigue, and reducing pain is getting the diet right. So again, uh, food is the most powerful medication out there. Well, it can help you, and it can harm you, but yep. really when it comes to any health issue, you should really look at food and proper nutrition. So Dr. Walls, let's dive a little deeper into what your protocol is and then I want to talk about how do we implement your protocol especially for people out there that are on a budget. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the, the key concept is we remove some foods that are really inflammatory. Uh, the gluten grain, so wheat, rye, barley, uh, for many people oats would also fit in that category. Uh, and uh, dairy, because many who are sensitized to gluten will also be sensitized to dairy. Um, I, I suggest people take eggs out for a while because many people don't realize that they've got sensitized to eggs in the journey as well. Uh, and then I ramp up the vegetables uh, with the goal of six to nine cups a day. Uh, I'm a tall lady, so nine cups to actually, in my case, 12 to 15 because I eat so many vegetables. Um, and for guys, uh, the men in our clinics, uh, the target was clearly nine cups. And we do it uh, green leafy vegetables uh, like kale, collards, spinach, uh, Swiss chard, 
uh, three cups of cabbage, onion, mushroom containing vegetables, uh, and then three cups of deeply pigmented stuff like carrots, beets, berries. Uh, it would have a program uh, for the vegetarian and vegans. It would give them some guides on how to do that safely, although our preference would be if people were willing to uh, eat meat. Uh, we'd have six to 12 ounces of meat. Uh, and then yeah, I, as they get comfortable with that, I move them into uh, the level two where we uh, uh, work on fermented foods, seaweed, and organ meats. We talk a lot about liver and onions. Uh, and then depending on the circumstances, I might put them on a ketogenic diet or I might take them into an elimination diet. But that, that would really depend on the specific clinical issues that uh, we are facing for that patient. So there's different levels within your protocol, but the basic place to start is really ramping up the vegetables and eliminating those key inflammatory foods. So you said uh, the gluten grains and oats yeah. and dairy yeah. and eggs for a little bit. Correct, correct. You know, and uh, nobody can get gluten back in. Uh, a few people will be able to tolerate dairy and a few more will be able to tolerate eggs. Uh, but we try to get the uh, all three of those problem foods out for at least three months. And then what is your recommendation for um, people that are trying to do this but they have budgetary constraints? Yeah, you know, uh, so the people that I serve at the VA often have severe financial uh, constraints uh, and are living uh, on food stamps. Um, so we talk about uh, you want to improve the quality of the food that you're consuming. So the first step is to understand uh, cooking at home uh, making a, a, a menu, uh, a plan, uh, making a um, recipe list, a uh, shopping list, and going out uh, and getting your food and planning for that. So we'd have cooking classes, and we would teach people that, uh, you know, if, if you can afford to be organic, grass-fed, wild-caught, that's fine. But, you know, the vast majority of my patients couldn't do that. So they were eating conventional food, uh, and they were having canned vegetables, and we're teaching them how that you drink the juice, you don't pour it down the drain. Uh, some folks had, you know, financial constraints, and we taught them how to do some meatless meals, you know, gluten-free, mind you, uh, to stretch their uh, dollars. Uh, and we certainly acknowledge that if, if you can't go organic, it will take a little longer to heal because – the detox process is going to take longer. But people still had, you know, great results eating conventional foods. Um, and we'd walk through, you know, yes, you can do canned. Then we'd walk them through into uh, getting uh, frozen vegetables and, uh, you know, going to the farmer's market, growing their own food. You know, it, and, and my, my vets taught me some great tips like, you know, if you go to the farmer's market, you sort of scope out uh, the farmers, and you can find out at the very end of the farmer's market, you can find out who's willing to give you a really good buy on their produce so they don't have to carry it back home. And so people could uh, figure out who was willing to almost give away the food rather than haul it back to the farm. Uh, so with a little bit of planning and inventiveness, you can get some great uh, produce here in Iowa. Um, often, even organic produce, uh, very, very inexpensively. So I think that gives people a lot of um, a lot of clarity on what can be done, even if you're not living in an area where or fresh organic and local is readily available, especially during the winter months, and that the protocol can be done with canned vegetables, canned, or uh, frozen vegetables, etc. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I love the idea of going at the end of the farmer's market and asking for a deep discount. Because it's true, they don't want to have to haul it all back to the farm. Yeah, people were very, are, are um, very willing to give people uh, very nice discounts. Uh, and some folks, you know, they're able to basically get it for almost free just because uh, farmers didn't want to take things back. So, And then the, the, next thing, the next thing I wanted to ask you about is getting the family on board because I hear this a lot from patients when I recommend a protocol 
uh, including yours, is like, okay, well, how much is that going to cost me, Dr. Carey? And then how do I get my family to do this with me? And I guess the, the first reality is, yeah, your protocol is not going to hurt anybody. Like, they're not, it's not yeah. a contraindication per se. The, you know, the, the thing that's going to happen is if you're healthy, a oh, G, you're going to get even more healthy. So we certainly talk about uh, food addictions and that if you want to be successful, you control the environment. You have the whole family uh, doing the protocol together um, or at least agreeing that in the presence of the person who has the greatest health challenge, you're all going to eat the protocol uh, and that the environment is completely clean. Getting uh, the whole family on board with picking out uh, what the menu is going to look like, uh, uh, getting everyone involved in preparing the food, growing the food can make it uh, easier. And, you know, and I think it, it's important that families give children chores. I explained that if your child is old enough to operate a video game, they're old enough to help you clear and set the table, and as their motor skills improve, help you wash and measure and prepare, stir, cut up, and then eventually help cook the meals. Uh, it'll it'll help the kids improve their nutrition now. It will help, imp- it, and we know that kids who have chores and who eat meals at home with their family have better grades, better moods, better behaviors, better nutrition, better health outcomes now and in the future because they'll be more comfortable with all these adult skills that way too many of our young people, when they move away, they don't know how to shop or menu plan or prepare meals. And so their health suffers. And their uh, cost, their daily cost for food uh, is much higher when you're always eating away from home. And then, Dr. Walls, what advice do you have for families with older children with teenagers or with a spouse that just does not want to change what they're eating? Well, you know, this is, um, in the end, you can only control yourself. You can have family conversations. Uh, And we talk about how you would not expect a crack addict to be successful at eliminating their crack addiction if the crack continued to be around them in their environment. Uh, And so getting the family, uh, the spouse to come to our lifestyle clinic, uh, that was a big part of what we did is we had uh, the the spouses come. We let kids come too so they could understand why we were doing all of this. And we had cooking classes and so we're making bacon and greens and green smoothies uh, and skillet meals so the family could see the food actually uh, it tastes quite delicious, and the kids are like, well, yeah, I, you know, I could eat that. Uh, and so that makes it much more uh, much more successful uh, if you can bring the family into these conversations and have cooking classes together as a family. So, Dr. Walls, tell us about your new cookbook. Well, uh, this was inspired by my vets who taught me how to cook uh, for people who are living on a budget, who are living on food stamps, uh, how to help them uh, improve their health through food. Uh, so uh, the food is fun. It's easy. This is not complicated stuff. Um, and I'm also mindful that you know, we're all pressed for time. So we have uh, things like skillet meals. Uh, we have soups and stews. We have uh, holiday treats. We have fun things uh, for kids, Um, and there's plenty of introduction for those who who have forgotten or never learned uh, their way around a kitchen. Fantastic. And then can you give us an update about where you're at uh, research-wise? So we we have continued to analyze data from our first study. We just had a paper come out uh, that looked at uh, the mood and the thinking ability, so that's very exciting. We're now analyzing the structural MRI data, so that paper hopefully will come out next year. Um, We we have a a study that is now funded by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, and we'll be recruiting 100 people into this study. We've got about 28 in now, uh, so we have a couple more years to go. 
Uh, but that's very exciting. So we are looking for people with relapsing remitting MS. Uh, and so uh, to learn if you might be eligible, go to send an email to msdietstudy at healthcare.uiowa.edu and uh, we'll help get it sorted out if you're eligible for the study or not. Fantastic. Dr. Walls, we only have a few more minutes left, and I know with this topic there's so much that we could cover. So is there anything that we haven't touched on yet that you think is important uh, for our listeners to know about? Well, I, I think people uh, have been wanting to know, uh, could they come see me uh, as a private patient? The answer is yes. We now have some uh, opportunities there. So, uh, But I'm sending that information out to my uh, email list, so please sign up for my email so you get the announcements about uh, my practice, and that's at terrywalls.com. Uh, and we'll have a seminar uh, for patients and for practitioners every August, and we have information about that uh, at terrywalls.com as well. Fantastic. And then uh, where can the audience find out about um, your book? And if they want to get more information about you, do you have like a Facebook page sure. and whatnot? Sure, sure. So uh, I'm on Facebook, Terry Walls, MD. I'm on Twitter, uh, at Terry Walls. I'm on Instagram, uh, Dr. Terry Walls. My webpage, uh, terrywalls.com. Uh, and, you know, please uh, come check out my webpage, sign up for my newsletter, follow me on social media because you'll see all sorts of fun posts and you get to see I often uh, post photos of what I'm eating so people can see what I'm up to. Dr. Walls, thank you so much for being my special guest today. Again, this has been an awesome interview. Well, thank you. All right, that wraps up this very special episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show with Dr. Terry Walls. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in today. And I'd like to invite you back next time for another episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carrie is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carrie is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please tell your friends about the Functional Medicine Radio Show, and we'll see you next week with more from Dr. Carey.